So here we are guys, that's uh, Partizan, just arrived, uh, about two and a half hour drive for me, so it's not too bad, uh, roads were nice and quiet, it's a nice venue actually, I don't know if you've ever been here, I haven't been here for a long long time, for many years in fact, so looking forward to today, especially after Salute, let's see what this place is like, I remember Partizan of old as being very good, so let's have a look, but this is the actual sort of venue in the, the ground as you can see, nice loads of parking, decent venue over there, that's, that's the venue where it is, so uh, let's get inside and see what it's like. anthropomorphic animals um, and basically we've got the um, the rabbits who are an expansionist society um, and then mostly the rest of the other animals who are defending their planets and their way of life. So we've got quite a few sets already available. We wanted to release some um, figures so that people could get playing the game straight away. We have got starter sets. Yes. The outlay would be £40. Um, that gives you seven figures um, and a free download of the quick start rules um, so people can get started straight away. It's skirmish based, 28 mil figures. Yes, we've got one just behind you at the moment. So, yeah, so it's a, it's a card based game. Um, so it's quick play, very intuitive, very easy to learn. Yes, yeah, very easily. So this game that's going on is based on an hour long scenario. All right. Okay, well, I am, my name's Bob Point. Yeah. I'm a Pathfinder for Mantic. I'm not affiliated with the shop. I'm just here to do the demonstration. So yeah. this game is Star Saga. Okay. It's essentially uh, a dungeon crawl through space. Okay. And it's the best sci-fi action you'll see all day. I guarantee that. Sounds good. Your money back guarantee on that. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so uh, how does the game work? So it's a typical uh, dungeon crawler in that you've got a party of characters yeah. that you need to work through a campaign that comes inside the game. Yeah. Um, there's about nine or ten missions. Starts off relatively easy, so if you like it to a computer game, okay. you get through the first stages fairly easily, but then it gets very difficult very quickly as you meet the big gribblies. Yes. Okay. So, uh, yes, there's six mercenaries that you'll uh, play. You've got three on the board at the moment here. You've got a bit of an R2-D2 char character. You've got a space ninja, samurai, man of death with a big golden sword. And then a grizzled veteran called uh, Salvaggio the Devil Francisco, who's got a big flamethrower. So, there's nothing wrong with flamethrowers. Everyone wants a flamethrower, don't they? Um, and, so, so, sorry? A very useful tool. As you can see, there's been a bit of action on this table already, uh, which is a bit gruesome, but uh, you know, this is live, so 
And they, these are all the minions that you'll be chopping in half with your big sword. So what actually happens in the game? What do you do? So it's, it's a, um, a tile-based game where there's uh, squares on the tiles. Uh, the pro each mission has a, an objective, so get through the door, yeah. hack into a computer, kill the big buddy. So there's the play character's turn in which the characters will move through the uh, through the dungeon in effect or the, the space station, interacting with bits of scenery, so the, the computer terminals, opening crates where they can find loot. Uh, opening doors can be a bit difficult, but your robot's there to help you with that. And then of course interacting with the bad guys. The bad guys in this are the humans. It's a bit of a reverse of uh, the typical trope. So uh, in the Mantic Warpath universe, the human faction are the bad guys. They're the oppressive overlords who are taking advantage of all the usual uh, space races that you might see, like the orcs and the dwarves, and one or two other. Not real life, then, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm not making any comparisons, but uh, yeah, but it's it's a quick game. It's a fast game. It's a beer and pretzels type of game that you make. Made a small area as well. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, it's there in about two foot by three foot. Um, there's lots of scenarios, there's a campaign, there's a lot of story behind what's going on. So if you're into the fluff and yeah. enjoy that, there's, I'd, I'd suggest putting on some really dramatic music, yeah. turning the lights down low, yeah, getting yeah. some red flashing lights or something to up the atmosphere. So but, to start yourself off in this, what would it cost? So the base set is um, £60 from Mantic, but today it's on offer with 20% off, so okay. £48 English pounds. Oh, that's good, isn't it? And, and there's two or three different expansions as well. Oh, that's the set too, yeah. Yes, that's right, yeah. So the Star Saga itself is the box set there. And we've got a couple of the expansions, a couple more over there. Um, this is a different campaign scenario that you play through with different creatures. This is called the Nameless, the sort of big space aquatic rugby type things. They've got the usual updates for the counters, which are cardboard in the game. These are the acrylics. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's got a lot of replay, replayability. No worries, thank you. Bacchus. Hello. I'm um, just doing a quick update on people's ranges and stuff like that. Yep. So, yep. What's new in the world of Bacchus? What's new in the world of Bacchus? Uh, our releases for this show, we brought out some lovely English and War Highlanders. Yep. Absolutely smashing. Charging, stood around, just lounging around, lovely, brilliant yeah. figures. And a major release in World War II. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah, uh, concentrating on the British yeah. with Germans to come, but there's some beautiful models yeah, in there. Second, please. Are they in the stand? Yes. They are, they're on the top shelf just there. Okay. What sort of price do you Starter Army still in that? Um, you can buy Starter Army from about £30. Uh, depends on the period. But the mid range army, £40 will get you about 600 figures. Really? Yeah. And what's coming up in the future? Uh, most more World War II releases, that's a major drive for us. Yeah. Um, we're going to be doing, in other periods, we're going to be doing uh, the Nine Years' War and then a big Pony Wars range for the latter part of the year. Lots and lots of plans. Okay. okay, I'm going to take one more opportunity to plug. In July we have our very own war game show, The Joy of Six. Now, even if you're not into six mil figures, come along because you'll see something, you'll see the whole scale and a whole new light. The very, very best of what you can offer on show. Brilliant. And even if you don't like six wheel figures, we let them for free. Why not come? Well, better than that, eh? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Joy of Six. Joy of Six. So if people look up Joy of Six, will they find something on the web? We have a Facebook and a web page, so you'll find us. I'll put a link at the end of the video as well. On the Brilliant. Alright, brilliant. I'm going to sort of myself out, but don't do it. I haven't gone back to the dark side. Oh, it's right. I will get out of the I know that. You know, you know it's coming. I know, I don't know. Oh, you can see it there. Yeah, you can see it there. Yeah, you can see it
That's my mate. Hello, mate. Can I just have a quick chat about it with you? Yeah, yeah, if you want. If you want to stand there, I'll just film you. Well, I'll actually there. film us. I didn't yeah. look good on camera, mate. No, you won't. It's, it's technically not my company, I know, but I'm here for the DI. Oh, is it? Okay, cool. So, yeah, lovely looking terrain. Thanks very much, man. Lovely looking terrain. Yeah, yeah. We've got a, we've got a whole range of stuff. We yeah. do uh, everything from ancient Rome, Dark Ages, going all the way through World War II. Amazing. We, yeah, yeah, we do uh, 28 mil, 20, 15. We do all different skills. Yeah, cool. Obviously, this is the painted up stuff, and we only bring this to shows, to show paint what it's yeah. like. All the kit come flat packed, so you have to build it yourself, paint it yourself. And what stuff sort like of that. price are we looking at? Uh, completely depends. So, like so, some of the normal smaller kits, you're talking like these ones, twelve pounds, something like that. Yeah, and it goes all the way up to the bigger kits, like the temple up here is like thirty-five pound, uh, and the big plantations over this way, the big hotels, forty-five pound. Yeah. But it all depends on what you want. Obviously, this is the Heart Sign Hotel from like yeah. the Arnhem Theatre. Yeah. So, if you're doing like a specific board or something like that, then you can buy the piece, oh, well, the key been piece. There, so that yeah, yeah. But uh, you can buy the key piece to go on the table and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Channel. Basically, I like to interview traders and stuff, and then it goes online, so it's on my okay. channel. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Lovely looking miniatures, first Thank of all. Thank you. First really time you've good. seen us? Uh, first time I've seen them close up, yeah. Okay. Like, I tend to do sort of slightly bigger scale, but yep. I've seen you recently and thought I'd like to have a look at those. So. Okay. Um, what scale is it exactly? 20 mil. People? All 20 so mil. 20 mil. Yeah. Seven seconds. Okay, lovely. And you specifically stick to early war stuff, or is that just the name of the company? Well, I started as early war miniatures, because yeah. uh, my love is of the early war period, World okay. War II. Yeah. But now we cover from World War I. Should you stand there, I'll back there for Okay. Uh, yeah, now yeah. we cover World War I, into war, which is yeah. really getting bigger and bigger for us. Yeah, yeah, so it's definitely. Abyssinia. Yeah. Siamese with civil war, a few unusual People things. People want the unusual wars now, don't they? That's kind of us, really. Yeah. A bit unusual. No, but you're actually tapping into a good niche there, really. There's a we do it because we like it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we've got early war, which I think we've got a very extensive range of the early war period. Excellent. And we also do late war too. Cool. Um, so a lot of the models, we, we managed to buy the Skytrex 20mm World War II range yeah. about five years ago now. Right. So a lot of that stuff was late war as well. So we do still keep reducing that. And um, do you do starter armies and stuff, or packs, or is it just individual models or something? Yeah. Individual models, yeah. uh, but the packs of infantry are based on, it's like a one-to-one. -one. Okay. So, a uh, British Army unit, 10-man squad, yeah. that's how we pack them. Oh, okay, cool. On the website you buy them as one-off figures, yeah. or you can buy a pack ready-made. So you've got the option there. Yeah, but we can only bring so much to the show, so okay, cool. this is about 40% of what we do. Yeah. The yeah. other rest is all online, because we just can't carry everything. Excellent, now what plans have you got for the future? Right, well, we've we just got a whole range of poles out. These yeah. ones have just, just hit the streets. Yeah. Um, guys, what we're working on lately, uh, I've got French motorcyclists dismounted. Nice. Belgian motorcyclists yeah. and Chassard in dismounted. Yeah. Um, and I've got a little pet project in the background with the Siamese Civil War. Oh, okay, fair enough. 1933. Yeah. Uh, Siam, yeah. and then also them against the French, okay. 1940, in the yeah. China and against the Japs in 41. Yeah, cool. So, now you've seen our resin buildings in the flesh. Yeah. I'm going to show you something. You might want to film this bit. Alright. Um, so, firstly, you can see how thin they are. Yeah. You can see right through that. Yeah. We don't just use the traditional resin that other people have maybe used. Okay, what do you use? And drop it. Ah. It, won't, it won't break. Okay. And we drop these. Very useful. 20, 30 times at a show. Oh, right. Brilliant. So, this stuff bounces, it doesn't shatter. Excellent. Uh, it's a brilliant, it's a plastic polymer rather than a resin in okay. the traditional sense. Yeah. The detail we get is incredible, it brings the price point down, they're lightweight. That's, that's always been the thing with resin models, is their, their breakability, hasn't it? Nice. I mean, certain large companies that sell thousands of pounds worth of stuff are known for stuff breaking and yeah. snapping, yeah. Not Could this. you put it on the table and I'll just film it so I think you can see that it's actually a genuine resin model. And it bounces, yeah. yeah. So 
will that, will that make you win games? I don't know, but it, <laughs> it'll be a lot more uh, cheaper. You won't keep breaking your models when you yeah. buy them. All right, brilliant. Thanks You're a lot. Welcome. Okay, okay. Got it uh, War bases. Yes. Did you want to tell me a little bit about the company and uh, what you do? Uh, yeah, can do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, we've been running for 12 years yeah, now. A long time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, 12 years now. Started out with bases yeah. on a table saw. Yeah. Um, started getting laser cut ideas. Yeah. Now doing movement so, space. Some, some of the stuff, I mean, these files and stuff are really popular now. Some special games like bolt action. And yeah, yeah. And games like that. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the dials are fantastic. Yeah. They're a brilliant idea. Um, a multitude of uses for those yeah. part of things as well. Um, we manufacture numerous kits for. I've seen the uh, building uh, range yeah. really nice as well. Trying to yeah. do a, a wider variety of, yeah. of buildings as we can. Um, we've got accessories and we've, we've branched out into our own range of figurines yeah. as well. I've seen the animals actually, really impressed by yeah, so we've been doing, doing, Yeah, so yeah. we've been doing the animals for about possibly four or five years at least yeah, now. Um, we've branched out into our own figures as well, so we're also working on a, a range of uh, musketeer figures um, with a, a rule set called All for One in the pipeline as well. So that's when, when, when is that arriving? We had hoped to get it out for salute last month there, but unfortunately, due to family issues, it's not come about. But um, we're hoping by the end of the year, possibly looking at Antwerp as a release date now oh, for us. Cool. What's that crisis? Yeah, that's yeah. Antwerp crisis show, yeah. So yeah. we're looking at that now as our, our aim for our release date. Yeah. If that doesn't happen, then it will be salute next year. Yeah. But we're, we're looking at a big show yeah. to, to release it to. So you so, so. Yeah. Do you do bespoke bases for people? We do a whole load of custom work. Okay. We, we can do pretty much anything. So if stuff, they can just contact Yeah, if you're looking for custom sized bases, yeah. trays, we custom draw buildings to order as well, so oh, we can nice. do that as well. Um, we do personalised dashboards for any rule sets, so if you've got an idea, we can draw it and produce it. Um, yeah, our custom range, there's no there's no stopping to it. So you can, if someone's got the idea, you can make it basically? Yeah, basically, if you can provide us with a sketch or a drawing or yeah. photos, we can work from that and produce something for you. Alright, thanks very much. Cheers. Uh, the range is basically Horse and Heroes, um, yeah. Medieval, uh, one, four, one to 144 one, scale, 12mm. Okay. Nice. They're all made from pewter, yeah. uh, lead free pewter, yeah. so they're easy to paint and they've got an awful lot of detail on them. Okay. And um, on the website, we've got uh, great articles about paint, how to paint them okay. effectively as well. Yeah. So we've also got the World War One range that we've brought out recently. With our tanks, which are over here on the display. So we've got quite a range of tanks there. The details are fantastic. And again, all led to the detail. So and we've got what is all you can need to share the meat off there. Was your union to so ACW, we have ACW as well as AWI. Front, so, yeah. yes. What's the sort of um, uh, future looking like? Are you expanding certain ranges? Or? Yeah, we've got a new, we're working on a new Ancients range at the yeah. moment. So uh, that will be out in the autumn, okay. the start of. We won't release everything all at once, no, no. but in little yeah, bits. Yeah. So we've got our massive yeah. figures started already. Yeah. So we'll be making the, making those available at the beginning of the autumn. Sure. Brilliant. All right. Yeah. So the global one uh, tanks is that going to expand, or I mean, there wasn't too many. Was there? Uh, we're actually working on some more one hex-based rules to go along with our, our hex system. Right. Um, so we have trenches, uh, etc. We can actually go to the battlefield. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. Comprehensive range of World War One figures every day to complement the tanks as well.
lovely figures. Thank you very much. Where's the idea come from this, for this type of figures? Because I know it's quite a range. Well, it all started because I was a second-hand dealer. And what I had to do was to um, supplement yep. the second-hand figures I had in, so I started doing accessories such as horses, shields, etc., and it grew from that. And so, just the stuff that people need. I love the way you've done a lot of the ancillary things you need in the game, rather than the main things, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've noticed the beautiful stuff over here, the waiting and stuff. Yeah, they're nice. They're yeah. very, very pleased with them. I mean, what, what kind of games do you think people buy these for? They can be for anything. Yeah. Anything. Any historical game. We've seen them on big set piece battles. We've seen them in a lot of skirmish games. 28 mil, yeah, all 28 mil. All my, all, all the stuff we manufacture is 28 mil. Um, we've seen them on on fantasy tables before now. So where do you get your inspiration from for stuff like this? Oh, all over. Long yeah. journey, long journeys in the van. Too many shows. Up and down country. Strange war game heads. Long journeys yeah. in the van and we come up with all sorts of ideas. Most of them <laughs> are not yeah. good to know, but occasionally we hit on something yeah, and it works. Good. So, so uh, what you got coming out in the future? What are well, you thinking on? We've got um, more of the 17th century figures coming out. Okay. We've got uh, scouts and a poacher oh, nice. coming out. We've got more medieval figures coming out. Good. Um, we've got more belt fed girls. Yeah. We've got a Gestapo. I like those actually, I'll just film them, they're very well, nice. Well, they're a little bit... Yeah. Some people like them, some people don't. Well, we that's like the world, isn't it, really? We don't honest. mean any offence with oh, them. No, no, don't no. mean any offence. We've got a Gestapo inspector coming out, oh, nice, and yeah. three steampunks, and then we have, at a later date, we've got some mermaids coming out. Oh, okay. So, cool. yeah. so what, you use those for pirate-type games? Anything. Yeah. We actually, a lot of people who collect the belt-fed range actually collect them as a range. Oh, okay. So yeah, whenever anything new comes out, they buy them, oh, yeah. um, but uh, other people use them in the games. So the, do you find you ship them all over the world? All or? over the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Australians and the Americans love them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, brilliant. Not um, a problem. So looking forward then, you've got these the medievals and stuff. What kind of things are you bringing out in that range? What are you thinking? Well, again, it's all non-playing characters okay, at so this moment in time. So it's background it's stuff. all background material. Right, nice. Yeah. Um, I mean, originally. The, the actual non-playing character side of it yeah. was when we used to stop the foreground buildings okay. and they were to supplement the foreground buildings. Um, however, we don't, we don't do that much with foreground yeah. now, so, um, but they are a range that stands up in their own right. Excellent. Yeah. So, I mean, I like it myself when we do games down in Power the Lord's SSWG in South End. And all the games we have have got ancillary figures and yeah. stuff that we don't actually need in the game. But Makes it look better, well, we like a bit of humour as well. Yeah, so we like to put a bit of humour in. That's why we have the we have the Duke on the John. Yeah, you know, the, the the guy there, the yeah, John John Wayne sitting on the top. I mean, yeah. he's he's appeared on so many Wild West tables. I've lost count. Ah, he's excellent. Um, but, you know, just little bits of humour here, there, and everywhere. Yeah, well, that's what the whole thing's about. Uh, yeah, it's a game yeah. Oh, the the medieval range. We've got like the little lad pick, picking the apple out of the, the woman's basket, yeah, yeah, and there's you know, yeah, yeah. So, it's all, all right. good fun. All excellent. good fun. Nice hey, it's my pleasure anytime. What's all about? Uh, Battlefield Trust is a, a national organisation yeah. with a regional setup. Uh, I'm basically there to uh, protect, preserve, and interpret battlefields. Yeah, excellent. I suppose a lot of that will be obviously the English battlefields. It's mainly UK battlefields. Yeah. So there's a lot of English Civil War that type stuff. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a particular interest. We're, I'm, I'm the uh, assistant curator at the National Civil War Centre. Oh, okay, nice. Uh, and I'm chairman of the uh, Battlefield Trust in East Midlands. Got so, so it's so, a so natural so fit between the. Uh, so, do you, do you like, I've noticed from your advertising media you magazine, uh, yeah. so if people want to join the Battlefield Trust, what do they actually get for that? Well, they get four of the magazines. Um, we get access to walks, talks, uh, tours of battlefields, yeah, which would be you know, with with somebody like me around yeah. Stanfield. Somebody actually uh, knows what they're talking about. Somebody right? knows what they're talking yeah. about, hopefully. Hopefully, yeah. Um, so yeah, so it, it, hopefully that will then paint a picture of what could be just an empty field otherwise. So, yeah. so do you get? I noticed you're at a war game show today. Do you yeah. get a lot of war gamers want to do it, or do you come? We do. I mean, this has been quite a good recruiting tool for us. Um, we've picked up two new members today. Uh, past events, we've probably picked up half a dozen. So, um, yeah, the, yeah the, this is quite well, different. People like yourselves aren't raised and funded by the government, to be fair. Well, yeah, we, we are all volunteers. Yeah, I mean, it is a history of protecting in a way, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah as, you know, as is the case as possible. 
gives us a nice firm period. Yeah. It encompasses the English Civil War, it encompasses Marlborough's Wars, yeah. it includes Samurai, it includes Aztecs, all sorts of funny old people as well. Yeah. But it, it's just to study, to discuss and to wargame those periods. Okay, so did you produce rules and things? We produce periods? rules, we produce books of uniforms, books of flags, the sort of things you can't normally get. Yeah. Um, for example, we're just running a, a big six-part article at the moment yeah. on the Spanish army of the 16th century, oh, okay. which we can't get, but the guy in Spain yeah. is everyday knowledge to him. So you'll get a lot more detailed information. Correct. Right. You get much more information, stuff that you just can't get, because we don't read Spanish. I don't read Spanish. Yeah. Very few of us read Spanish. Yeah, I'll make sure I'll Very few of us read um, Hungarian. We've got a Hungarian guy as well that writes yeah. for us. So we, we get lots of details, and they say uniforms, flags, organisations, that just aren't available in English. Excellent. And it gives us, through things like our Yahoo group, it gives you can talk to people. Yeah. Although we do only publish in English, yeah. um, because most people, including our European partners, English. even Americans talk yeah. English, some of them. Um, we, we have access to a lot of foreign language information. You know, we have a couple of Dutch academics who write for us. Oh, nice. Um, but again, they write in English. Yeah. <laughs> so how long has the society been going? 1972 or 75, okay. I can't remember. So it's probably up 40 odd years. Yeah, so... Um, We're going a long time. And what kind of membership do you have? What sort of numbers does it... Does it's about, it, it, it varies, but it hovers around the 500 mark. Oh, okay, that's pretty, that's pretty reasonable. About, game, it's right? about a third of the member of the So are you more a historical or war gaming group? About half and half. It's, about half. it's a mix. It's a mix of both. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's an awful lot of historical stuff in the journal, simply because that's what people want. Yeah. You know, they, they want this information. Yes. They, they know how to push their soldiers round. They yeah. just don't know what colour to paint them. Yeah. Um, but we publish specific war game rules, not generic war game rules. Right. Okay. So not war game rules that cover 1417. Right. Yeah, ours cover 1618 to 1660. Oh, yeah. it, Little top quotes, what they are. Yeah. Uh, that's, so, know, is there like a membership fee and stuff like that? Yeah, you, we, there, there's a membership fee, it's an annual, you get six copies of the magazine. Yeah. We do publish other things. Is this? This, is, this is our magazine. Okay. Um, they're the latest issues. And I can never pronounce that. It's Arquabuzia. Arquabuzia, right, okay. <laughs> it's gone from 
sort of little staple thing yep. to colour and colour plates and all sorts of things now. So oh, right. you know it, it 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 changes as the So if it's your period that you really want to yeah, if you're, if you're period, uh, you will find something there you haven't seen before, you haven't found. And when you're buying all of our uniform books, we, the object is not to make a profit for the members. So then we publish them, the members are buying virtually what they cost us to print. The, re the public and booksellers are obviously buying them from us at a commercial yeah, to sell. But our, um, our members buy the same, so they get, they get it. And it's, so how would people join? Website? Website? Okay. Surprise, surprise, pikingshop.org. Yeah, which is that one there. There. And, there. and there. you've got PayPal on there. You can, yeah. There's an address. You can send us a cheque if you want to. It's very modern then. Different from the 70s, I imagine. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I remember I started Wargaming in the 70s myself. I started Wargaming in the 70s, yeah. yeah. So. Oh yeah, well, you couldn't find there. But no, it's, it's all on there. There's also, you go on there, you get um, sample issues of the magazine. Yeah. Um, Contents of the latest magazines, so you can see what you're getting into. You know, it's not it's not a pig in a poke. You can say, oh, they're the last six magazines. Oh, yeah, I would have loved those articles. I'll join. And if you're a member, you can always, you can always get back issues as well. So it's, um, well, thanks for talking to me. And, uh, sorry. Thanks for talking to me. But no, thank you. From Blitzkrieg oh, Miniatures. Uh, Blitzkrieg's obviously your game. It is indeed. Uh, it's been going for a few years, as I know. It has, yes. We've had a set of rules out for a few years that we've been playtesting with uh, the people. It's the first time I've seen this size in the flesh uh, yep. at a show. Um, I've done lots of shows, but I'm looking at yeah, yeah. Uh, The scene is very, very impressive. So, what scale is this, first of all? Right, this is 28mm, yeah. or 148, as some people call it. But also it could be 28 mil and 156. Yeah, okay. We won't get into the dynamics of no. which is the right scale because that's a whole new video on its yeah. own. Uh, but we normally game with uh, certain miniature companies with one fourth scale tanks. Yeah, okay. uh, and as you can see, we've got a mixture of sort of companies here with with uh, with the miniatures. We've got yeah. Crusader, Artisan, and a few Warlord games. Yeah. And what we've done is we've integrated them in with 48 scale tanks, yeah. uh, which we feel is uh, looks about right for yeah, the scale. Yeah, I've seen comparison videos on the net. Yeah, and yeah. When you look at them closely, perhaps the 28 156 is a little bit out. I yeah. wonder some people use them as they want a smaller. Room I don't think there's any right or wrong. No, um, no. At the end of the day, some people like to use certain yes. manufacturers. I mean, with the, the bigger tanks look more impressive. I must admit. Uh, it's boys with big toys, really, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what, what, what can you say, sir? So, so what's, what's the idea of the game? What's it based on? I'm very familiar with battle group and games like that. Is yeah, it yeah. similar to those? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a game that we've been playing for the last three to four years. Yeah. Uh, we've been playing at events. We've also offered it out um, online for people to try. Yeah. Um, it's in the editing stage at the moment, so we've only got, obviously, drafts, uh, which kind of shows you the initial layout, how the books will actually look. Yeah. Um, We've obviously got all the core rules which we play, so when people come along to actually play the game, we can take it through and explain how it works. Uh, the dynamics of the game is obviously it's based in World War II, and what we tried to do is design a game that was very scalable. So if you wanted to play with just a platoon of 10 men, you could do, uh, but you can scale it up to a 24 foot table and it works just as well. Um, so yeah, infantry on their own or infantry and armour, it's entirely up to you, even with aircraft. So could you play up to say, company? Yeah, you could play company level. Yeah. Um, you know, on the on the smaller scale, the 56, 28 mil, uh, we do a lot of work with the Perrys. Um, and what we do with that is we will use just one of their box sets, so a yeah. Desert Rats box set versus a Africa Core box set. Yeah. Game scales up just as well. So you can play it on a 4x4, 6x4, 
or a really big table? So I can see the range is uh, the size of the table you've got. Yeah. What would say the, the range of a tank be? Because obviously in real life it would go Thousands of yeah, I mean, what we've so, tried to do is sort of scale it down depending on the calibre of the gun, for yeah. example. So some of the guns, for example, are 75 or 76. So we've done it at 60 inch uh, for the gun. Uh, and the reason for that is most people will probably play on a standard 6x4 table. So it kind of covers that. But again, it's not set in stone. So if you're playing on a big table, you might turn around and say, OK, we'll double the range of the guns, for example. So, you know, it's... it's well, I mean, the first thing most war gamers do is house rule sets anyway, don't they? Always. So, I mean, that's how most rule sets are created, yeah. really, isn't it? Everybody does their own sort of tweaks. Uh, like do you allow it. some personalities in the game, certain aces or we've got, like Yeah, we've got things sort of like the uh, the tank commanders. We can yeah. do things like Churchill and Rommel and things yeah. like that, which will give certain buffs or benefits to okay. certain units. Uh, that's something that we're looking at doing, but again, it will just sort of tweak a particular scenario. Um, they're not going to be super OP that's going to be, well, I've taken Rommel, I've automatically won the game. No, no, fair enough. So, yeah. so um, if somebody was starting off in this, yep. uh, what would the initial outlay be? It could be very small, as I said. You could buy a, a box set of a Perry's, for example, at £20. And if somebody's got a, an Africa core and, and you buy the Desert Rats, you're looking at 40, 40 quid and you're up and running, really. Um, if you want to buy one of the resin tanks or one of the tanks that we produce, you know, the starts about £20. Um, you could just run one or you could run none at all, like you said, even at platoon level. So £40, really, or £20 for yourself, yeah, you're up and running. It's, uh, What's yeah. the cost of the rules? The cost of the rules, when we produce the rules, yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to have a rule set that's probably going to be about £15, £20. Pounds. Uh, but that will be everything that you will actually need. Then you'll have supplements like this, for example, the airborne and whatever. They'll come into a box and they'll be about between 10 and 15 pounds. So will it be sort of similar in concept to battle group, that kind of Yeah, what, what, you, what we won't do is produce things in lots and lots of supplements. No. You'll probably get a German supplement and that will yeah. take you through from uh, the Blitzkrieg area yeah. right through to the, uh, yeah, the fall no, of Berlin. Enough, because the, the period's so big, you've got to bring that supplements anyway. Well, that's right. And it's, it, you know, you can interlock the game's design so you could play early against late war if you yeah. wanted to. Yeah. It's how people want to do it and like you say, ass rules. Oh yeah, exactly, man. that's what it's all about. Absolutely. So you've got aircraft on the table, is that actually, yeah. that's not just the show? No, no, it does its own thing. Uh, it is a, um, a real tank buster. Yeah, it is. It will really... Uh, Those up. tanks are in trouble, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's uh, the guy in the Yag Tiger, I don't think yeah. is feeling too strong no. at the moment. So, uh, yeah, if you come down, it do its thing and then it will kind of fly around. Um, so it's got its own rule set for you to be able to use as well. Um, we've probably got in the region of, if you're looking at the uh, Germans for example, yeah. probably around about 80 to 90 vehicles already oh, nice. set. So and they're 148. Yeah, well, the 48 but I'm talking about rules within the book as well. Yeah. Okay. So even if there is vehicles that people have got, and uh, there's no, uh, and we don't produce the miniatures. Yeah. That's fine. You still get the rules so for it. So you can just use your own miniatures, use your rules. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we've not designed it where you must use Blitzkrieg. Yeah. It's a very generic game. Yeah. Doesn't matter whose manufacturer that you use. You just play the game. And your actual infantry miniatures. Uh, we don't produce don't, infantry miniatures. No, 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 I don't think so. But no. we work so close with the Perrys, that's okay. the thing. Oh, right. oh, um, so, said, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we. Yeah. Um, they, they make lovely things already, so. Yeah. I can't say anything, a bad word about them. No, I mean, no, they no, really no, are the yeah, best at what they do. They are, yeah. yeah. Um, and they're doing, obviously, the desert. They've kind of gone into America yeah, now, so. US troops. Yeah. Good old America. Yeah. Uh, so we've got American troops out, and um, who knows what they're going to do after that. Excellent. So what's the timeline for the rules, roughly? I know you can't put it down. Yeah, I know. It's, it's difficult to put it down. Like I say, we're in editing at the moment. Hopefully, in another few months, we'll get everything nailed down. So we're in that. The rule book will come out. And we'll also produce the books as well. So you won't get the rule book and then think, well, we're waiting for another stuff. Yeah. We intend on releasing everything at the same time. So you should have everything to play the game. You say you've covered vehicles from the beginning to the end? Yeah, I mean, we've we kind of worked with the Perrys because of how they've worked in the desert. Yeah. So we've done a lot of the desert, so we've gone from uh, sort of Al Alamein right through to the fall of Italy. Okay. Uh, the Americans have just come in, so we're going to start producing a lot more 56 American vehicles now. Okay. 
Um, and then we've done a few bits, snippets, what we found, a, a small gap in the market where people wanted vehicles that they just couldn't get. So what we like to do is generally produce vehicles that there is a demand for, or gamers are wanting that they just cannot get in either plastic or resin. So we're always open to, to people to get in contact and say, look, we really, 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 really like this, um, and we normally produce them. Okay, and what's the next show this game will be at? Uh, well, this is our local show, because yeah. obviously we're based in Mansfield, so yeah. Nottinghamshire. Uh, our next show will be the one in August, I believe. The other partisan? The other partisan, yeah, yeah we, we do the other partisan, and we've also started doing the show, which I think is the fantasy version. I'm not quite sure what that's called now. Okay, well, uh, I don't know either. So. Yeah, it's... Um, Apologies, Hammerhead. Hammerhead, oh, in March. Uh, I know, yeah. March so we, we do a, yeah. a demonstration table, which yeah. we did, and it was a, a, a snow table. Okay. So we don't always bring the same table at the event, no. uh, and we don't bring the same type of miniatures as well. So you'll okay. always, whenever you come to an event, you'll always find a different different participation. Brilliant. So, yeah. Oh, thanks for talking to me, mate. No problem at all. Cheers. Thanks for time. Thank you.